Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a cycle time calculator for machines, robots, and other types of processes. To get started, you can find the calculator in your eCatalog panel under Models by Type, Miscellaneous, and here's the components. So I'll add it to the 3D world. And if you click this note icon here, you can find some documentation about the component. You connect Boolean type signals from other components to the calculator as inputs. When the signal value is true, that will start the calculation. When the signal value is false, that will stop the calculation. So you can have multiple components connected to the calculator at any given time. And each connection is a different calculation. The results of these cycle times are printed in the output panel as well as in the properties of the calculator. So let's show an example now. I'll delete the calculator. And under Models by Type, let's go to Demo Layouts. Let's start with Machines, so I'll do a search for Machine. And I'll take this second item here. It's a machine tending layout. Open in the 3D world. This should have three machines. It does. So let's connect these three machines to the calculator. I'll now add the calculator to the 3D world. Put it over here. And now go to the connect group in the ribbon. Click signals. And there's a lot of other types of components here. So I'm going to hide the network map from the 3D world. And in the connect signals task pane, I'm working with the first input. Let's select a process per lath machine, and I'll select its transition signal. That is a signal used for letting you know when a part enters and leaves the machine. For input 1, just select it here. Let's now connect the milling machine, its transition signal. Select input 2, and let's connect the rotating table. That's the flip table, yes. It also has a transition signal. So very quickly we were able to connect three machines and we'll now be able to calculate their cycle times. I'll close out the connect signals task pane. Run the simulation. Here come the parts. In the properties of the cycle time calculator you can see a cycle times tab and each connection is indicated here. So we have the lath machine, the milling machine, and the flip table. And notice a part left this machine here so we got output printed in here and we have the cycle time also displayed here in the properties of the calculator. So I'll speed up the simulation just a bit. We now get feedback about the flip table. A part is in this third machine here, so we should get feedback about that as well. And it just continues on and on and on. Alright, so that's how you can use machines with the cycle time calculator. Let's now take a robot example. I'll press control plus the end key to clear the 3D world clear my output panel as well. Let's go back to demo layouts and let's look for a spot welding layout. I think there's one down here. Yes. So it's called spot welding. Add it to the 3D world. This should have a robot cell. I believe about six robots. And we can see it has the floor plan. I will actually hide that right now. So we have, oh, well, we actually have five robots. So to get the cycle times for the robots, different routines or motions, let's use our calculator. So add it to the 3D world. Might be hard to see, so you can change its size. So its current value of size is two, but I'll change it to five. Just make it easier to select. Once again, we'll connect the signals from the robots as inputs in the calculator here. Uh, let's take a look at this robot here. It should have a Boolean signal. If I display the network map again, whoa, we get a lot of connections. So let's do this straight from the calculator side. So I'll select a component. For the first input, let's use the KR120 Pro number 6. So let's use its output of 100. And this is a separate connection. So the next connection, I'm going to connect to input 1 in the calculator for the other robot, number 7. Same input port though, just to keep it simple. Next input, select it. Pro 8. Same output port in that robot. 100. Next connection, select the input. Number 9. And same output port. And last connection, I think there's 5 robots, yes. So Pro 10, number 10. Just like with the machines, very easy to quickly set up 
those connections between the calculator and the robots. So each robot will use output port 100 to start or stop the calculation. And if I run the simulation, close out this Connect Signals task pane, you can see each robot is listed here in the properties of the calculator for each type of connection. So in this first robot, this is pro number 8, zoom in on it, and now go to its program. So this should be in its hold routine. Quite a lot of options here for picking. It has this pick routine here, but let's use the hold routine, see how long it holds it. So add a set binary output statement, port 100, set a true value to start the calculation, and at the end of this subroutine, let's add another set binary output statement, port 100, that sets it to false. For these robots here, I believe they're syncing their movements in a weld. So this is number seven, and it has a weld subroutine here in the program editor, so let's select it here. This has a lot of movements, so let's add a set binary output statement to the start of the weld. 100 is the output port, true value. And then at the end of the routine, let's add a, another output statement for output port 100 that sets it to false. So we're going to calculate the cycle time for the robot's motions in its weld subroutine. I won't do that for the other robots, just so we can quickly see how it relates to these two. So let's reset, select the calculator, and go back to our home tab. So here are the doors. It might take some time for the car body to get here. Oh, so I'll speed it up for you. But we're just focusing, I believe, on number eight and number seven. So eight and seven are listed here in the cycle times tab for the calculator. And we should get some feedback once the robots exit out of those subroutines. And we do for number seven, about 22 seconds, and for number eight, it was 30 seconds. And if we speed up, the calculation will start again. So I could run the simulation a bit faster for you, just to see the next result. And we get more feedback printed in the output panel for number seven. And this is, this is good. The first iteration showed about 22 seconds for the robot holding the door to be, you know, different in the next iteration, 21 seconds. And the same was also true for the other robot we connected. So first time was 30 seconds, second time was 29 seconds. Interesting. Okay, this completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.